I think banking is by far the most sexist industry. It took me a lot of deals to prove to them, these mystery people that sit at credit, you know, that I'm capable of doing what I've been doing for 15 years. Wow. And that's why I started saying, I mean, screw you guys, I'm going to do all hard money, and that's what I did. Today, we have Amanda Sokol. If you don't know Amanda, just go on LinkedIn. She's probably the most famous, I don't know about most famous, next to Barbara Corcoran, right? (laughs) Next most famous real estate personality on LinkedIn. She's an absolute killer. Um, She's amazing at finding off-market, direct-to-seller, large multifamily commercial investment opportunities, She's raised a ton of money for ground up construction opportunities. She is she owns three hundred plus units, right? And and not for nothing, she is a single mom of two beautiful kids. She's an absolute monster and an inspiration. Amanda, thank you so much for making it on the show today. Thanks for having me. We're we're pumped about this. If you wanted some insight into how famous Amanda is on LinkedIn. <laughs> She she posted about us getting a reservation for her in, in <laughs> Miami, and that day, and like I didn't think anything of it. I was like, oh yeah, sure. That day, we I got like three three four hundred LinkedIn requests. Holy crap! It, I was like, what is going on? And like people are messaging me like, can you get me reservations? Oh. <laughs> I'm like, this isn't what I do, I guys. I, I do real estate. <laughs> it was it was absolutely crazy. So no, it's it's yeah, a pleasure. My last post, I think, got five. I don't know, it was like 500,000 views or something. Impressions? Yeah, impressions, whatever they That's are. insane. I still call them my friends. Well, I don't know, what are they called on LinkedIn? They're not your friends. Connections. Connections, Connections yeah. yes. Five, 500,000. Yes. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, it was so crazy. I don't, it got like 2,000 likes. What? And like, yeah. What's the secret? It, it was so, and it was a picture of like the house that I'm going to sell and it was just about like a story about how I bought this one house at a sheriff's sale for fifty one thousand and like how it appreciated. And basically I was like, you know, stay in your lane. Like that's where I started. But mm. I am coming back and doing deals like that again because that's what makes the most sense right now. And for some reason, I didn't even think people would read it because it was long. But um, yeah, like I got I, I got bombarded with messages and, you know, people trying to give me money and like and I'm like, I've no I'm just not set up for that, you know what I mean? So it was uh, it was a lot. That's amazing. Yeah, and totally unexpected. I, I read that post. It was really good advice. Thanks. Once you start getting outside your comfort zone, trying to, you Risk. know, the shiny yeah. object comes in, that's when things start to go bad. But you could make a ton of money at stuff that you're you're already yeah. good at. I Like, I made so much money with single families. Like, you can take them, rent them out. I mean, it's a lot of work, but I feel like it's, I can make more doing that than like right now I'm trying to do a deal, which I actually just got the terms from the partner today. And I was like, what's the point of owning, owning 5% mm. of this building when I, you know, for whatever value that is, when I can buy, you know, five single families for that. So I don't know. I guess it depends. But, but yeah. that, that's how you started, right? You started with I single s- family? Yeah. So I started in single family. So I actually bought, um, my first deal was my um, triplex I lived in in college. I did seller financing, and I just had a horrible landlord who didn't want to be a landlord, and it was West Philly, so at the time wasn't really the nicest place on earth. And um, so he seller financed it to me, and that was my first deal. And then I moved to South Jersey and bought single families, and during that time period, it was like the crash from 08. So you could get like a single family home around me for like 50 to 70 grand. And like it needed work. Right. Like I remember one I bought for 42,000 and I would buy, I would go to the sheriff sales and I buy them there. Um, but I would just renovate them and rent them out. So like I'd be all, I tried to stay all in for a hundred thousand and then the rent would be anywhere from like probably like 13 to 1600. And so they would cash flow like $400 a month per house. And um, I'd refi, I'd get all my money back. Wow. And plus some. So right. like each deal, usually I'd get anywhere from between like ten and 20000 on the refi. 
I think I've refied them like four times. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I just Ask keep for going. Money. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm curious. So obviously I know what seller financing is, yeah. but for those that don't, what is seller financing and what were the terms of the seller financing that you had on, oh, on if remember. you remember on that first deal? Hmm, I don't remember. It was so long ago. <laughs> um, you were you were a college student? Yeah. 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 What, how the hell did you even figure out seller financing as so a student? Did you have a he, real estate he, background? No, no, no. So I worked at the sheriff's office t- typing the sheriff's deeds. Oh, no so way. So, like, I would always talk to those guys. They're all investors. Right. And, um, you know, I would, like, ask and... Uh, the, he was just a bad landlord, like didn't do any upkeep on the place, and it was just a mess. And like I think I my my portion of the rent was like two hundred dollars, maybe. Like no. that just kind of shows you what it looks what? like. <laughs> yeah, I had a guy that would sleep on the front porch. Like this is like West Philly, like twenty years wow. ago. Wow. Yeah. So um, he just wanted to unload it. So I, I didn't have any money, but I was like, I'll buy it. And he was like, All right, like we came to some sort of agreement. I don't. I honestly don't remember what it was, but it was like nothing. I think it was like one hundred and fifty thousand, maybe, maybe less. Um, and was he it had triplex? The note. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. What were the other tenants like? It was thirty six in Spring Garden. Um, the other they were all college students. Oh, okay. Yeah, I went to yeah. Drexel, so it was my um my like college apartment, basically. Right, right. Um, so yeah. You know what? You have such a crazy story. It would be nuts for us not to hear it. Can you just kind of walk us through your journey in life and how you ended up in real estate? Yeah. So. Um, so I bought that when I was in college. Then my um, my ex husband is a real estate attorney, uh-huh. so he does uh, foreclosure prevention, so short sales, deed and lose, all that stuff. And he got really busy and needed help, so I started working for him, um, and I got a lot of deals that way because like deals would fall apart, and um, people would be like, you know, what am I going to do now? I got to like relist it, or or when they did short sales, they would do um, like a pre approved price. So I already knew what the bank wanted. Um, and some of them made sense. So I would buy some deals that way. Um, and it just kind of fell into place. Like this is like, Oh, eight. This is after Oh, eight. So this is like 2010, 2011. This is like when I bought most of them, like 2010 to probably 2016. And then after that, like single family started going through the roof. Um, but that was really how I started like gaining momentum and then I I kind of started networking through the law firm with more people so that like you know more investors and stuff um and I just kept doing it and really it was my job to lose money because I was offsetting his income so I I wasn't really trying to make anything it was my goal was to make it so that we had depreciation and you know Mm write-offs so I didn't really even make money until (laughs) my divorce <laughs> and then well like, until 2020 i guess wow. but um yeah so then i had a whole bunch of tenants so uh, then i got all these tenants and COVID happens and i had all these people that just stopped paying oh and i gosh. still had to like pay the mortgages and stuff um so i started brokering loans and i did debt and equity and that's how i started doing that that i could actually make money and still lose money <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> yeah. so so y- your back's against the wall, I guess, right? Yeah. You have, what, 80 tenants at mm-hmm. the time? Mm-hmm. And, and how many are paying? Um, Like, most of them were paying. There was, like, probably about five that weren't. But the five that weren't paying didn't pay for so long. So um, one went on, like, a cross-country trip. Another went to Disney with his whole family. <laughs> I'm like, that must be nice. Like, you haven't paid your rent. Like, there was nothing you could do. Like, in Jersey, you couldn't get people out. Yeah. And, and like, there was programs, but, like, they had to apply for the program. Uh-huh. And, like, they're like, eh, you know, I'm not doing that. Yeah. And they would use the money, but I don't know what they did with their money, but they weren't paying their rent for, like, two, three years. Wow. There was nothing I could do about it. The courts were closed. Yep. So it was really rough. So I was able to, like, broker loans, which in COVID was so hard because I'm sure, as you guys know. It was impossible. Yeah, yeah. Like, I had a hotel. I remember the one deal in Atlantic City during COVID. That was, like, my first that deal. Is no, there's no way you oh got that gosh. done. I got financing on it. How? They never built it, though. But I did get it. So. Um, what? Yeah, and it was, like, this weird bank out of, like, Las Vegas or something. Celtic? Celtic if, if, bank? If, if you gave me, like, it? what's the hardest deal to get done in COVID, I would say... <laughs> Hotel in Atlantic yes. City. Never going to happen. I'm not. So I went to work for my friend and he was like, listen, you're like, 
he was like, you're going to hear a thousand no's. You only need one yes. And I was like, all right, like I can do this. Yeah. And I must have called every lender on the planet. Like I, there was one that would do it. That was it. Oh, my it God. One. Yeah, it was awful. But you got it so done. Bad. Yeah, I did. But they never built it. I actually saw him recently in Atlantic City. And I was like, do you ever build that hotel? And he's like, no. But he took the financing. Um, no, so it never, like, went through. It never uh, closed. But they, I did get it. But, no. Yeah, he didn't do it. Damn. Yeah, I know. It would have been a good story. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I got it, but it didn't happen. I helped build that building yeah. right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so so then, I guess, you know, you're brokering loans. That's yeah. supplementing your income. And then yeah. and then you started doing bigger stuff. Is yeah, and I started, so I started doing equity, too. So I was like, oh, I can get two points on equity and point on debt. I'm like, this is great. I'm going to do both. Then I get to do the whole thing. Right. right. And then it's like three points. Um, so that's why I started doing equity. Um, and then I started seeing as a broker, like, you know, you get everybody's PFS, right? And I'm like, wait, like I have more like properties than these people. I have more experience than these people. I can do this myself. Right. And I think that's like really what changed me was realizing like, you, you think like real estate developer, you think like they're like, <laughs> you know, I, at least I did. Right. They're like million they have millions of dollars in the bank and they're like i don't know i, th I think it was like what i thought mm -hmm. and then i realized like this isn't what i what i think at all like they, they have some of them have barely any money and i'm like you know really trying to sell them to the bank and i'm right. like i don't know i think they can do this <laughs> <laughs> seems like it you know. yeah i don't know they kind of built something like this before <laughs> We're in student housing and now. They're trying to build like you know some industrial complex. I'm like, oh, yeah, um, but yeah. So after that, then I was like, oh, so I'm gonna start like doing bigger stuff, and that's kind of where I got the inspiration to start to start segueing into finding like, off market multifamily deals. Yeah, ones. yeah. So then I have like all these relationships from just being in real estate forever. So from being a broker, then from from raising the equity, you get to know like a lot of like you know, family offices and stuff. Um, and I have a lot of friends that are in real estate just from, I, f I feel like when you're in real estate, you attract real estate people. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like ever, all my friends are in real estate. Um, and then they would come to me and they'd be like, hey, like I have this deal. My grandma left me and, you know, do you know anybody that'll buy it or would you buy it? And I'm like, no, but I'm sure I can find you somebody. And that's when, like, I don't really call that many people. You know, maybe I call, like, five people that I know. And then if I can't find anybody that way, I'll put it on LinkedIn. <laughs> and believe it or not, I sold deals that way. Yeah. I believe and, it. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't even know how, but it's a very powerful thing, LinkedIn. I, I feel like learning the financing aspect of real estate makes the rest of it become a whole lot easier. Yeah. Once you realize, like, okay, well, this is a deal, this is – Who's going to find this is how you're, this is the amount of money you're going to need to raise. Like once you understand that conceptually, then it becomes kind of just fitting the puzzle together. Yeah. And I went to school for finance and economics. So I knew how to do a pro forma. I knew how to do all that stuff already. Um, but definitely like to grow, you need to know numbers and you need to know like capital stack. And I still feel like deal structuring I totally like geek out on how people like structure their deals like I love that stuff mm -hmm. and like I have a deal now where I'm trying to figure out like what is the best way to approach this because I need 1.6 million I don't have it and <laughs> it's like I was like okay I'll bring in somebody usually I'll bring in a money partner so I was gonna bring in a money partner they had a 1031 but they got stuck in litigation their deal's not closing mm. so I was like okay great I was on vacation of course, this happens while I'm away. So I oh, can't really, like, look for money while I'm away because I'm in the Bahamas. So um, I was like, all right, let me just put it out there. I put it on LinkedIn. Or maybe I put it on Instagram. I forget. One of the two. And somebody reached out to me, but it's just not, like, the terms I'm used to getting. So I feel like I don't know if I'm being difficult or, or what. But I don't know if money is harder to get now. Um but, yeah, definitely, like, I think something we don't really talk about is how much of these big projects these people really own, right? right. Like, people would be like, oh, I have, you know, thousands of units, whatever. 
is like, do you own 8% or 4% <laughs> of those? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, I think that's one thing that I'm still kind of learning is is ownership. Like, because when I have the single families and I buy the smaller multis, I can own all of that myself. Yeah. But like, if I, for me to do bigger stuff, I got to give up a lot of ownership. 100% of 80 single families is a lot. That's yeah. I mean, a lot of a lot of people we you know we speak to the fourteen hundred doors, but I'm like, you know, th- you know, three percent of fourteen hundred. Yeah, yeah. So like, is that the norm though? Is it norm to get like three percent if you're a syndicator? Is that what they get paid? I, I think I think it just depends, right? It's, it's like the way that everyone's being taught in these guru classes. Yeah. Is like the guy who finds the deal gets thirty percent, right? The guy who's asset managing gets. 20%. The guy who's signing the loan guarantor gets 15. The guy who raises the money gets 30. And then there's like 10 people raising money on the 30% side. So everyone's getting a little tiny pieces and you ha- you end up having a team of 20 general partners. And yes, everyone ends up with like a microscop uh, like like a tiny piece of a of a big yeah, deal like, and it's like Is it worth it? It's not worth it. So on this deal, it's like 20. I can probably talk about it cuz it won't be out right in time. <laughs> So it's 27 units, and it's in my town, so which is great for me because I can literally walk to all of them. So they're scattered sites. There's five of them. And um, I'm getting a good deal on it, but, like, the it can only get 70% LTV right now, right? And so that puts me at, like, one six of closing. And for me to go out and raise that money would take forever. And then I have, like, 10 people. That like you know that I got to get a hundred grand from right and um so I went to this one company and thought maybe they would do it but they literally offered me like three percent of the whole deal of the whole deal what because they're putting up all the money yeah that's crazy no that's that's so don't do it right like no that's absurd yeah. Like What's the deal? Talk to us. Maybe we could do. We could raise. Yeah, yeah like we could help seriously, you. Seriously, like you guys raise. I I just can't raise money for myself. I don't know what it is. Like I need to get over that hurdle, but like I can't. It sucks. It's actually I, easier to raise for other people. Absolutely, it is. Yeah. I think that's what it is. It's it's definitely like people keep telling me it's a mindset. I don't think it is. It's not a like. I don't know. You know, I I just ha- I have this problem too, with reaching out to friends and family to invest. In your yeah. I'd I'd much rather talk to some stranger. Yeah. Because for some reason, your friends and family are the last people to believe in you. <laughs> Even after you've <laughs> no, built up a true. portfolio, they're still like, mm, you were a degenerate when you were 15 yeah. years old. It <laughs> does know? feel like that. Like, it feels like they're like, hmm, is she like, and you're like. Well, for me, it's easier to say like, yeah, my buddy's the man. He's got this deal. He's crushing it. I'm putting money in. And I'm, uh, yeah. uh, I think you should too. Versus like, I'm the man. I'm crushing yeah. it. I just don't like to talk to myself up either. that way. I'm glad I'm not the only one because people are like, you need to get over that. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh. Easier like, said than done. Yeah. So I yeah, yeah, I don't like to raise money for myself for my own deals at all. Just pretend it's somebody else's. I know. I <laughs> so talk to us about this deal, Amanda. What do you yeah. got cooking? Uh, yeah. So let me let me end up at three percent. I was like. <laughs> He was like, you, and you can roll your acquisition fee into it. And then he gave me a huge acquisition fee on it, Whoa. I think, so I would take that instead. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that What's was the acquisition play there. Fee? 100 grand. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that's so you're good. buying it for what? What are you buying this 27 unit for? Uh, Four million. Four million? Yeah. What's the reno? Uh, it doesn't need much. So okay. it's pretty much occupied. Okay. And there's like one vacant unit. Um, You know, it's like a long-term play. It's not like a short value add play sure what do you think the property's worth when you um in about like a year or two so i have a doubling the noi so like the rents are really low and he did like really crappy renos like Mm -hmm. there's like five different floors like that to me is like not okay like i'm big on like everything looking pretty and nice and he'll do carpet tile vinyl plank and it just looks like crap just looks like crap yeah so, um, like, who still put carpet in rentals? I don't, it's like, crazy. It's, yeah, <laughs> like, you're replacing it every time. Yeah, like, every time. Uh, yeah. Um, and vinyl planks, like, the same price, if not cheaper. So, um, yeah, so the NOI, I think, is going from, like, 237 to 446 Whoa. 446 Yeah. Wow. So you're, buy- you're all in, let's say, 5 mil with the reno. Yeah, that sounds right. 
So you're all in. You're you're going in at a nine percent yield to cost over like a two year period. You think? Yeah, I think two years out? is safe. Yeah. What do you think the cap rates are trading for out there? So cap rates right now are a little confusing for me because you have some people that are still buying stuff at like four and fives. And mm-hmm. It doesn't make any sense because I'm like, how? Right. And then you see other deals that are like, you know, sevens. So I would, I mean, this is a nice area. It's literally, I think it was voted like number one place to live in South Jersey. Really? Every Which every, every year, Haddonfield. I live there. This is where you're from. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm not from there, but I live there. Oh, you live there? Yeah. So from a farm. Like a five, seven, five cap, six cap? I would say like a five and a half probably. Five and a half. So you're, you're bringing this to a 466 NOI, mm-hmm. 466,000. Divide that by a five and a half cap. You think this thing's going to be worth about eight and a half million? Yeah, about like two even years. when I broke them out and tried to like comp them based off the, if they were. It's like four individual structures? Five. Five? Mm hmm. It's a great deal. Yeah, no, it's a great deal. And I had another deal that I was Brian, trying to do. Brian, there's 60 cents on a dollar. <laughs> right. Where you, why are you having a hard time raising? What, what, what are you doing? Because I let, didn't go to people that, like, I, uh, first of all, I don't have, like, rich family. Yeah, yeah. Like, I You're don't have, farm. Like, yeah, I'm on a farm. <laughs> so, like, I, you know, I don't have that. So, I mean, I could go to my family, but I'm not, it would take forever. Like, yeah. they each give me, like, 10, 10 grand. Dollars, 10 yeah, dollars. Yeah, like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's not happening. Um. So, and like friends wise, I feel like all my Put friends are in real estate. Put it out on LinkedIn. I yeah, know. make it a 506. What kind of equity? Are you, how are you trying to raise money? Is it dead? I haven't tried. The, so these guys were the first guys that I tried. Okay. And they were like, and then they came back with that. And I was like, now what do I do? Because mm. I had the 1031 guy. Right. And we were 50 50. Gotcha. So I we went from 50 to three. That's insane. <laughs> I think you could raise it on LinkedIn. I it's like a test. Out, like I, I just put, put it on out one day. On Instagram. And I'm not even kidding. I just needed to raise like 350 grand. Okay. In like in, in a short period of time. So I was like, I don't want to reach out to people. I want them to reach out to me. Yeah. So I post. I don't know if this is SEC SEC compliant either. <laughs> but, uh, Probably not. Uh, I just put, say accredited. I, I think said, it waves it. <laughs> alarm, alarm, alarm. Hit me up if you're looking for 14% returns. Oh, I saw paid that. Paid monthly. I saw that. Personally guaranteed by me in real estate. <laughs> Definitely I'm, not. As easy. No, the, probably I not. I think the right. words returns and guaranteed, <laughs> guaranteed in one sentence. In one, you know what? Let me delete this as we speak right now. <laughs> yeah, take that uh, down. You tagged me. I, I didn't repost. I was like, <laughs> I think this is important. You should have told me, man. You're like, we cannot guarantee return. <laughs> personally. I, oh, you know I, what? As, as long as one guaranteed. of us isn't in jail, I think we're okay. Wow. <laughs> Josh turns around. It's, it, it's in shock. <laughs> <laughs> Do not do that. <laughs> All right, so deleted from both Facebook and Instagram, but I got like 15 people hitting me up. Okay. Super interested in investing. So, with, I mean. With this guaranteed return. Uh, <laughs> I should have said signed personally. But <laughs> yeah, right. Backed by real estate. Or something. Backed by real estate. You did say posts. that, I think. Yes, I yeah. did. Yeah. But, but I feel like it, it, you with such a large presence, especially if you do launch like a, like a 506C, which allows you to that. solicit. Yeah. It only costs like 15 G's, but if you put it out on LinkedIn, you would raise money like Yeah, like I think that. so too. And honestly, you don't even have to necessarily do it. Say, I have this deal I'm, I'm raising money for. If you're interested in investing with me, like, let me know. And have, that, have Anthony over here in this room take all the inbound calls. So, yeah. So that's the thing, right? Is I don't even have time to like sort through my messages. I mean, okay, like, say, say 500K minimum. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that. Oh, so maybe that would like. Yeah, so you, you get slim it down. Slim it down. You get yeah. Then you get all you need is three people. Because I mean, think about it. every person sure, that yeah. wants to give you money wants to meet you, right? Yeah. So yeah. And then you have to find the time to go meet them for coffee. Mm. You got to talk to them about the deal. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's just like I feel like it's very time consuming. It's a job in itself. Oh, it absolutely. Raising money. It absolutely. It's is. a it's a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a living nightmare. I know. Um. Wh- so what are you gonna do with this deal, Amanda? I don't know. So I can't take this 3% because now, like, I feel like I put it out there on, on this, this. And, like, now everybody's going to be like, you didn't well, take it takes that, you? Well, if it takes you three weeks to raise the money, by the time this podcast launches, you <laughs> might you might get, you might get you some need, people. When do you need to close? Um, So, like, the seller's kind of waiting on me to okay. decide what I'm going to do because it needed some, like, CapEx stuff, so we're negotiating that. Um, So I don't know. It's like finder's fee raise the money this is a uh, now this is what guys, deals in dollars is for i know i feel like you guys talked me into trying to raise the money like maybe this is the first deal i raise my own money i think you really could honestly i think if you said 
I think if you said, I'm looking for investors on this deal that I have, it's an amazing deal. It's in my, in, in my hometown, 500K minimum. If you're interested in working with me, let me know. You'd probably get, no. you'd probably get f at least just five people that were and like, then what yes. do you give them? Like, how does that structure work out? Like it, then like you could, I, honestly, this deal cash flows. What was, so you're buying a, it cash flows as is it cash flows as is, but you're taking out bridge debt. No, I was going to do regular regular financing. Yeah. Okay. So Lakeland, I think gave me, was giving me like 70%, 70%. What does it spit off after you pay the debt service? Um, Two, you're at two six six. You said yeah. Two, so I think I want to say it was like it wasn't a lot. It was like seventy grand. Seventy grand net after yeah. the debt service after the payment. Debt service. And you need to raise one point six. I was at like a one point two DSCR. One two one two DSCR. So you only have enough mm. as it currently stands to pay a four percent uh, interest yeah. rate pref. Yeah, okay. on, on the money, you have to give out some equity. I feel like on a yeah. deal like this. Um, so what do I get? Deals and dollars. What Deals and dollars. How do we structure? How do we yeah. structure this deal? I mean, the easy thing is just give away fifty percent. That's like yeah, it's just normal. I think yeah. that, I think you could like this sounds like a freaking great deal. Yeah. If 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 you want to talk offline, maybe yeah. we can actually help you do this. Okay. Um, but I do have a million questions to ask you. We should go into questions. We yeah, should go okay, into questions. Right, but I'm deal. sure the audience <laughs> found some value. Yeah, 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 no, this is good. Okay. This is good. So and if you guys like, want to invest, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Before it's too late, it's by the time this right, releases, yeah, by it's the done. By the time it's released, she's going to be 30%. You get 30%. Wait, so that, wait, that's actually my post that I had on LinkedIn was about my deal in Haddonfield. Oh. Yeah. But I didn't say I'm raising money, but I just said I'm circling back to where I started. Oh, that's wow. That's where I started. That that pose. I could do another pose. So now you just said you a just piggyback it. Yeah, <laughs> you just put my number on your on that post. <laughs> call this number. I'll take all the calls. Yeah, <laughs> and put them into our deal. Hello, yeah. David Choi, Amanda's <laughs> assistant. How you doing today? Um, all right. So Amanda, you're finding like it's incredibly difficult to find multifamily, larger multifamily investments. Yeah, off market. Everyone, I mean, 95% of the people that we brought on this show, the people that I talk to that get these larger deals are saying very, very, very impossible, very difficult to get them direct to seller. They're always getting deals through brokers. So can you share? I don't mess with brokers, really. You don't mess with them. Can you share with us how you're not messing with brokers, like <laughs> specific strategies Sorry, or brokers. resources you could share? Um. <laughs> so <laughs> drop the gold. <laughs> I so I have so many ways. Okay. Um one is I have an entire network of wholesalers. Mm. So they mainly specialize in wholesaling single family homes, which is what most wholesaling does, right? Mm -hmm. So I probably know every wholesaler in Philly, Jersey. I um tell them, "Hey, like you ever get bigger stuff?" Give it to me. They don't have the buyers for it. I do, right? So, like, I'll split fees with them. I don't care. They know I'm not going to, like, screw them over. Um, and that's how I get a lot of stuff is, believe it or not, they have a lot of deals they have no idea what to do with, like, land and stuff. They're like, I don't know anybody that will buy this. Like, somebody called me for, like, a, you know, 48 unit here, and he's like, what do you think it's worth? They also don't know what to offer, right? Mm -hmm. They have no idea how, like, a lot of them know single families. That's what they know. Right. Um, or smaller multis, they know that, but they can't, they don't know how to like really put a value on a building with a commercial component. And so they'll give me a lot of deals that way. Um, and then another thing, I give a lot of free advice. So people will call me, ask me questions. And then if I can't help them, they're usually like, well, I'll either point them in the right direction or they'll be like, maybe I'll sell it. And then I get it that way. Um, and then I've helped other people who have like, you know, kind of, then they tell other people, you know, the go giver. Yeah. yeah it, but I do give out a lot of free advice and generally want to help people. Honestly, I don't like, if I can help you, I will. Um, but I do get a lot of deals that way. And then people come to me to raise capital in a hurry. Like, so I'll find like, you know, if you're like, Amanda, I'm, I'm sure of my closing, I need a million dollars for tomorrow. I can do that. Right. Like I can find that money. Um, and I like those deals because they're fast. I have like ADD, so like I need to like I can't do a Fannie Mae loan that's like six months long, right, <laughs> whatever right. it is. Right. So like that I can do. And so in those deals, sometimes they fall apart. Um, 
and, you know, maybe I can't find the money for whatever reason or maybe there's issues with it, then um, they'll be like, do you know anybody will buy it? So I get that too. Hmm. You know, I think it's just having value. Like mm-hmm. if you can, you know, help people in some sort of way. You're like a resource. like a Yeah. And, you know, there's no obligation to me. I, I don't sign agreements, believe it or not. Really? No. Oh, I get that paper signed. <laughs> I don't. I, I'll tell you what, that's freaking great advice. <laughs> like, people it's sleep so on working with wholesalers. I, you know, King Kong? Let's no. get this Monet, the no. crazy Asian dude. No. Oh, I need she's LinkedIn. Him. She's not, oh, you're yeah. LinkedIn. She's not Instagram. This yeah. takes a TikTok yeah. viral guy. I'm going to get him, though. He's the best. I love King, King Kong. Kong. Is he in New Jersey? No, he's out in like Seattle. Oh, okay. That's fine. He had, he asked me to speak at, in front of all his students because he has a mentorship program. Um, uh, and, I, and I did that, and I did it, at, like, I tried to drop as much gold and all the tech we use, the software, the skip tracing, everything. I just shared everything. And lo and behold, like, nine months later, I get a random call. This was, like, on Wednesday, yeah, like, a couple days ago. Guy calls me. He goes, hey, I got a deal in Jersey City. Uh, do you think you'll buy it? I said, no, nah, I'll never buy it for that price, but I can help you sell it. The three family. Three family. Yeah, you saw it. They got the text. Yo, yeah, yeah. like we ended we ended up doing a joint <laughs> signing a joint venture agreement two days ago. We just we just showed it today. We have an offer for a two hundred eighty thousand dollar wholesale fee. Wow. Yeah. That's a Come lot. on, Playboy. Wait, hey, why didn't you want to do it though? Because when I, I looked at the numbers, it looked like it made sense. Yeah, which we're just trying to get liquid today. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we got like it. that. We, yes. we, got, we got a lot of deals going on. Oh, okay. Like, too many. Too many. Too many deals is a good problem to have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is. Yeah. We need to stabilize a couple a couple of deals. Yeah, so that's when my deals are stabilizing now. Which like, is good. Yeah, like I feel like now I need to like, and then you know you start to get like, what else am I going to buy? Yeah, what's next? Yeah, what's yeah. next? <laughs> so talk me through, you, you told me that you did, you, you have a huge wholesaler database. Mm-hmm. How did you go about obtaining that database? Hmm. You know, that is a good question. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so, and I also, I partner with them too. Uh-huh. So if they find something, I bring the money because it, or you're talking about on these like single families, it's like 20 grand. Yeah. And so I'll be the money part. And they're like, you know, they'll do the work, wow. do the deal. So they I got a, you. yeah, I got a lot of deals. Like, so then we have that relationship now and, you know, they're more willing to help me, um, you know, with bigger stuff. Mm-hmm. So. I, I don't know how I met them all, honestly. I think I've been on their list for, like, forever, and then I just reach Network, out. Yeah. yeah, and then there's not many women that do what I do, so, no. like, you're like yeah. kind of stick out. You definitely do. You definitely so, do. Everybody, yeah, you're everybody an exceptionally knows beautiful <laughs> real estate entrepreneur, right? Yeah, there's just not a lot. I it's don't like, know why. Like, but. The amount of times I've been like, do you know Amanda Sokol? I'm like, yeah, everybody knows everybody Amanda, knows Amanda, Amanda yeah. Sokol. <laughs> LinkedIn famous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So my question is, like, how like how how do you do it all? Because I you know I've been following you on Instagram and LinkedIn. And like you're always somewhere. You're always with your kids. You're on a vacation. You're doing a deal. Like yeah. you're everywhere. All the, like how do you how do you do it all? I don't know. I just do it. Like I just <laughs> wake up every day. I'm very laid back. Like I'm my one of the things I always say my friends will make fun of me is it's fine everything's fine it's like how I go through like it's like that meme where the, yeah, everything's burning yes, and yes. it's like it's fine yeah and he's just sitting there working and yeah. like everything's burning down um, <laughs> that's me like I'm just like you know what we'll figure it out everything's fine I roll with it I try to spend as much time with my kids as I can um, I try to make the time that I spend with them really valuable um, I do work with like a lot of really religious jews who don't work on friday mm, to right. s- and saturday right. so i started using that time to spend with my kids so like on fridays and saturdays we kind of just i mean because i'm not busy i mean that's where like, no, i think they're on to something with that i it's amazing it really is it's like uh it's such a reset like, yeah and it's really it's 25 hours but like and my kids are obsessed with it so it's definitely um you know help i give them 100 percent of my attention Wow. And I'm not busy, you know, on Saturday. I mean, there's other things I could be doing, but um, I try not to work at all. So unless it's like emergency. Yeah. I, I always like to say that that, that I'm part Jewish. <laughs> um, but I genuinely love that like Friday night yeah. to Saturday just to like not work, to disconnect. I, and yeah. And I feel like everybody needs it. Yeah. Everybody needs to disconnect. 
And, um, you know, I, I have a lot of virtual assistants. Mm-hmm. Um, they help me. So they do my stuff on from Friday to Saturday night. They'll do my, you know, whatever needs to be done. Um, and then I have Buildium, which I use um, for property management. And um, What does your team look like? So you're, you're managing all your tenants, yeah. all your now, projects, Well, some of them have deals. on-site management. Okay. So two of, my, two of my buildings have on-site management. So they handle that, like, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I have a couple of partners who manage they you, under their management company. I have a ton of partners. I don't know how many I have. I have a lot. <laughs> like, I mean, because people will be like, oh, do you want to, like, I'll partner with anybody. Like, you know, as long as, like, we get along, obviously. Yeah. But, like, you know, you can learn so much from partnering with somebody. And I think a lot of my partners are good at things that I'm not. Like, I'm not the person that's responsive within minutes, right? Like, you don't send me an email, I respond right away. Right. Like, that's just not me. I'm, I'm more on site. I like to do that. Um, and, like, I'm dyslexic and I have ADD. So, like, if I sit down to, like, do my emails, I have to, like, that's, sit like, down. yes. Yeah. I can't do it, like, on the on road. The fly. Yeah, or I'll forget. And, like, so um, I really try to just have, like, computer time. And then, but really where I like to be is on site. I like to oversee all my construction. And um, I think that's where I'm most valuable is like finding deals, like going out, looking at the deals and then um, being on site. And I'm great with tenants. My tenants, you know, all love me. Um, and they all know <laughs> who I am. But, <laughs> like, I'm sure they do. Knows yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. Can I say one thing about the emails and yeah. responding and doing all yeah. that? Uh, like I, I get about, I would say about 350 emails a day. Um, Eric probably gets about, I don't, I think you get, he, I think he did the math, did the math there. What is it? On average, I get like two a minute, two a minute, every minute of every day. Yeah. I think he's got 10 million unread emails, right? I got, I got like 20,000. 20, yeah, like I it's, have a it's, lot ins- too. it's insane. 11,000, I think. You develop like your own system to like kind of scan through what's I'm important. I'm good at scanning subjects. I'm like, uh, like that's. Let me look at that. Or like one. I know that person yeah. or like, yeah, yeah. like I, you get a lot of spam crap too. So yeah. it's like you got to go And I'm on all that. the transaction emails for all the companies oh, and stuff. Yeah. So that like I see all of that. I, I I literally like I was starting to go absolutely nuts. I was working from 5 a.m. in the morning to like 12 o'clock at night just trying to keep up with my life. And I was like, if I do this, I'm, I am I don't know if I could keep doing this. Right. So I, I, um, I talked to my business partner, Brendan, who just hired an EA and he's on this crazy like buy back your time. Uh, he's like trying to just figure out how to get his time back so he can spend more time with his kids, yeah. right? And so he's giving me advice. And so over over a, like a 24-hour period, I spent like 16 hours just going crazy on how to figure out how to work with an executive assistant. Mm-hmm. And I put this crazy manual together. Within like two weeks, literally right now, I never have to follow up with anybody on any outstanding assignments I give to somebody. Like I delegated. Yeah. All my emails are are cleaned out. They're put into here's the ones that you have to read, or here's the ones that you have to respond to. She drafts up responses oh, that's for amazing. me. Here's all the ones that you're waiting for people to respond on. Foldered in. All my spam is filtered I out. I need this person. <laughs> my calendar is immaculate. Like, why don't I have this? Like color coded. Right? And it took me oh, two weeks to do. I could share my manual with you. Yes, I, I want this manual. But I'm telling you, I pay her seven dollars an hour in the Philippines. She's a oh, beast so she's dog a BA. animal. Okay. You know what? We should do that, Josh. We should David's v- executive assistant manual. If you leave us a review, if you leave us a review. And subscribe, you can get David's yeah, that's a, VA yeah, manual. Yeah, I want this VA. Manual. Cool. Yeah, yeah like, it's seven dollars. <laughs> it's seven dollars an hour, and you don't need to pay a hundred thousand dollar hour person. Yeah, just get a well spoken, highly detailed. I have, them. I have VAs. They're in the Philippines. Yes, and they're great. Amazing. Yeah, I love them. David's EA manual. Just leave yeah. us a five star review. And but uh, <laughs> they had asked me if I wanted them to have access to my email, and I think I was too much of a control freak. Mm-hmm. I was like, no. Yeah. Yeah, I'll share it with you. Like, okay. just spend like a couple hours reading through it. It's very detailed, but you're gonna have to build out your own like version of yeah. it. But it'll give you a guide, right? Do they do your scheduling? They do all my scheduling. Okay. So I manage my brain. Like, here's what I can only do. Here's what needs to be delegated, and here's things that I need to set up. I, I started getting phone calls 
from from Erilyn, who's our his his EA. It's his confer- schedule time. Cur- confirming <laughs> that I'll be attending the meeting with David in thirty minutes. I, I was like, that. I was like, Erilyn, don't call me, please. Dude, come on, don't talk to Erilyn like that. That's my girl. <laughs> I'm I am not getting. I'm standing next to you, and no, she's calling. No, you gotta respect Erilyn, man. I, 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 I said, Erilyn, I'm standing next to David. I'll be attending the meeting. Yes, thank you. Okay, she could continue calling. She you, didn't man. call me. She hasn't called me since. This is the problem. <laughs> I try to tell it. This is horrible. But like, so. time is like one of those things, though, that you can't buy more of, right? That's what they said. Yes. yes. So it's so true. You literally run out of time. And people think I'm rude, I think, because they don't respond to their LinkedIn message. It takes me a month to respond. But it's because <laughs> I get 500 messages, and like half of them are people trying to sell me something. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and I still have to read it to go through it. So it's, it's you know, I got to get better there for sure. So I got to ask a question. Um, you know, I think we've had what 60 guests, 70 guests. Um, two of them, your number two, have been female. Yeah, it's it's a it's a male dominated industry. Like, it is. I mean, I think there's very few and far between uh, females. You know, besides some like attorneys, I guess. Um, how is how does that play into you know how you like? It, to me, I see I could see it being an advantage. To, you know, I've also heard it's a disadvantage. Does that even factor into your mind? Is this? I think I go into every like transaction, every relationship, just that like we're normal, we're friends. Like I am, I'm probably more of a guy's girl than a girly girl, I guess you would say. Yeah. Um, Although you're wearing pink pants. I know, I do. I wear really <laughs> bright colors all the time. Um, you know, I don't know why, but I do. Um, and I think that in some aspects, there's a long ways to go, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, as far as maybe raising money for myself, mm-hmm. do I think that it would be easier to raise money for a guy? Probably, mm. right? Sure. Um, I don't know that they feel 100% confident in a woman in that role. I don't know that for sure, though. But it's a feeling, maybe it's my own insecurity. Um, and then... I think banking is by far the most sexist industry. The actual banking, like whoever is this, you know, what are they, what are they when they send it to credit, right? I have had loans where I've had to add guys to it. Mm. And I don't, I think it's been, it's taken me a long time to get to a point where I could get past credit on my own. Wow. Um, it, it took me a lot of deals to prove to them, these mystery people that sit at credit, you know, that I am capable of doing what I've been doing for, you know, 15 years. Wow. Yeah. So, um, geez. Yeah. That I think, I mean, (laughs) maybe maybe some people disagree with me, but I do think that banking is like an old, old man's world. Definitely. You know, like a guy's guy's guy. What do they call that? I forget. Like a a milk, the, what the is it called? Boys Club. Yes, yes, the Boys, boys Club. Yeah. That's the old Boys Club to me is like standard lending, and yeah. that's why I started saying, um, "Screw you guys! I'm going to do all hard money," and that's what I did. Wow, for a long time. Wow. <laughs> like, I mean, I still get hard money. I love hard money. I'll take it's it. It's quick and easy. It's man. so quick and easy, and time is money. Yeah. Amen. So. Amen. I I've never had to do any of my loan 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 documents. Thank God for. Uh, you, Eric, yeah. and um, <laughs> Anthony, who's not here with us. I hate detailed work. Yeah. I'm, it's like my living nightmare. Yeah, I'm great like at it, it but yeah. I ugh, I can't do it either. It yeah. drives me nuts. Yeah. Thank God for Anthony over there. <laughs> so as a mother of two, <laughs> it's right there. you have a boy and a girl? Or a girl? Yeah. Okay. So as a mother of two, how do you approach financial literacy do you pass down entrepreneurial values to your children? So I try. So I try saying to them, like, I take them with me to work, right? So, yeah. like, I took them to the, I was like, they're going to want this one building. I took them to it. It was a school. Um, it was, like, a church school, and I was converting it to multifamily. And I'm like, I'm going to take wow. them there. They're going to think this is so cool, right? It was a rooftop in Philly. You could see the whole skyline. I took them up on the roof. And I'm like, what do you guys think? And they're like, no, we don't think you should buy it. And I was like, Why? And they're like, we really want you to be a teacher instead. <laughs> what? Yeah. So, like, I was like, you do realize, like, one day you're going to have real estate. Like, they don't, 
Yeah. They, my son is trying to understand why other people live in our houses. <laughs> he doesn't understand. How old is he? How old are they? He's five. Oh, he's yeah, he's big. like, this is our house. Like he doesn't like. <laughs> I'm like, well, it's our house, but somebody lives there. They pay to live there, and he's like, so we don't. We're not moving there. I'm like, no. <laughs> we've also moved so many times. Like I think we've moved five times in two years. Oh wow. wow. Yeah. So they don't really. So finally, we moved this week, and I'm hoping that now this will be like their stable life. Like the last time that we moved for a long time. Is it all within the same town? No. Oh. We lived in Philly. We lived, like, Everywhere. all over the place. Yeah, we lived with my parents, which was the best. If my parents didn't still live on a farm in the middle of nowhere, I would live with them because it was so helpful. Aww. Yeah, like, my dad made them breakfast. And, but, yeah. Um, I think that they see how hard I work, and I th- I'm hoping that that, you know, sticks. And they're not. It's tough. It's yeah. tough. That's my biggest fear. I I grew up poor. So you know? did I. I was. Like, I didn't grow. I don't I want to say poor, but that. like yeah. you know, like I grew up surviving, like not no abundance of yeah. of money, and it was tough, right? Like seeing my parents struggle, and I was like, at a certain point, I was like, "Fuck this! I'm gonna make a shit ton of money. Yeah. I'm gonna retire my parents. I'm gonna give my kids the life that you know that I didn't have." But now that I'm now that I'm a, I, I'm not I'm 28, right? Now that I'm I, I'm accumulating a little bit of money, I'm like I don't want to. I want my kids to kind of yeah. suffer a little bit. And you realize that you're probably like that because you grew up that yes. way, right? Like I mean, I don't do this for the money. I really don't. Mm-hmm. Like it's not a money thing for me. But I mean, I grew. My dad worked at Acme, and my mom was in school, so like oh, wow. we didn't have any money. Yeah. Um, and they didn't know anything about real estate, mm. so, um. I, you know, do I want to just hand my kids all this stuff? Probably not. You know, I mean, there's got to be a better way. So, Make them earn so it. my <laughs> parents, my parents, we were, we were, I would say, well off. My dad sold software, worked for Oracle and all this stuff. But growing up, we were good, but he didn't give me anything. Yeah. He wouldn't get, my friends would all get money. We could go out. Get, uh, my dad wouldn't give me shit. Never. I didn't get a car. I didn't, you know, none of this stuff. And I was always like, why are you like, why are you such a dick? Like. You know, I'm like, <laughs> give me money, please. Yeah. All of my friends get money anytime they ask. And for me, it was like, well, what do you do? What do you do lately? Do you take out the car? Like, what do you, why do you deserve money? I'm like, because I'm your son. Like, give me money, yeah. please. And, and I remember, um, I love Chief. Like, two Chief. years after I graduated college, calling my dad, I was like, you know, I, I hated you at the time, but I know that's why I am the way I am. Yeah. So, like, thanks like for that. Like, you have the drive. Exactly. I think some of it you're born with and then some of it you're definitely like raised yeah a certain way but yeah i mean i used to pick blueberries i i've been working my whole so i would pick blueberries before school so i would walk there in the dark pick blueberries no before school no way yeah and that was like in june and then um i love blueberries i know so yeah, i would like eat them and like <laughs> throw some in the bucket that's breakfast yeah and then i would go to school and then i worked at burger king and uh, i'm a vegetarian what? i've always like been a vegetarian people would be like what do you think of the big mac i'm like i don't know or whatever <laughs> whopper well, i'm like i don't know <laughs> get the cinnamon buns the mini ones wow yeah so i've always had a job i've always had multiple jobs i've always had to work you had a hustle uh, yeah, always. I used to sell s- designer stuff on eBay when I was in college. That's how I got the, m- the money for to start investing. Is I would buy, I formed all these relationships with the guys at like Louis Vuitton and like Gucci and stuff. And they would get these like limited editions and they would call me first uh-huh. and then I would buy them and I'd sell them for like double on eBay. Wow. Yeah, I don't know if people still sell stuff on eBay. I used to, I used to sell Zippo lighters on, on really. I buy them in bulk and then sell like sell them individually. Yeah, it's like a hustle, right? Yeah. Like you either have it or you don't. Right. I don't know that you ever learn it. Is you have to like really want? Mm. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know that's so, Amanda, <laughs> you're a self made millionaire. Yeah. God bless you. <laughs> God bless America. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what habits or mindset do you believe? contributed to your financial success? I think removing limits, right? So when people are like, oh, I want to be, I want to have 500 properties or I want to be, I want to, you know, have $2 million in the bank. Like, I guess they're goals, but to me they're limits. Like, Mm. that shouldn't be how you think. Um, I'm also very positive. So, like, 
for me, there's a problem, there's 20 solutions. Let's just come up with the best one out of those 20, run with it. If that one doesn't work, we'll go to the second one. Like, mm. And I try to just, you know, have the most positive, you know, just outlook on life mm. and work in general. I mean, there's always going to be problems. It's how you handle them. Yeah. And, you know, as a landlord, you get 50 problems a day. Absolutely. And then, you know, like doing these transactions, like, is so there ever one that doesn't have a problem? No. Never. No, they're awful. Like, why like, is this going so smooth? Yeah, like, you get nervous. Is, yeah. Yeah, like. <laughs> yeah, I sat like, at a closing today, signed doctors. I'm like, this woman does not know what she's doing. Yeah. There's the like, wrong. It does not close today and fund, the deal dies. Yeah. I'm like, you, you filled that one wrong. <laughs> Get well, this one again. <laughs> well, I was at the bank sending the wire, and the wire doesn't go. And then I call the bank. I'm like, why isn't the wire? She's like, oh, it should go out today. Like, it should go out today? Or, or it is, Or yeah. it is. And she's like, well, it should. I'm like, well, can we guarantee? Because if the That's does, why we send wires. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I've, I've sent a million wires with you guys. I've never gotten a should go out today. It, it was insane. What else happened? The, the insurance got pulled. So our insurance jumped to $11,000 on a four family. <gasps> right? And Anthony comes to me. He goes, the deal's dead. <laughs> the deal's dead. And I go, I, go, I go, what do you mean the deal's dead? <laughs> this all happened in the last, like, like it's five, 24 was hours. Was this today? Five yeah. hours. Okay. In the last five yeah. hours. Just because it went way too smoothly. And yeah. then at the end, everything went crazy. Everything, but everything goes crazy every time. So yeah. you have to be able to handle those problems, but not let them just totally, like, deviate you and crush you, right? Yeah. Like, they can't, you can't let that, like, define you and your day. Like, it just has to be something that happened that day that you were just like, all right, I'll figure it out. I okay. just keep picturing the meme with the, the fire burning, and that's, you're just like, ah, That's my life. It's okay. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? We'll figure it out. And I say the same thing to my kids. Like, when they have a problem, every problem has a solution. It may not that. be what you want, but every problem has a solution, and we can come up with it together mm. and figure it out. What's, what's the saying? It's, it's uh, the man or woman who thinks he can and the man or woman who thinks he can't are both correct, right? Yeah. No, and it's true. It's a mindset. You have to just totally be in in it and want it. And you have to want it really bad because every day I feel like I wake up ready for battle. Somebody it ready is a to, battle. to freaking take me out. We're going to war, baby. No, it really every feels day. like I take my sword. I'm like, oh. let's go. <laughs> no, and, the, and like, who's going to come at me today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I someone. I, I I've been using that mindset every day recently because I'm proud. I've been working a lot, yeah. and I come into office, I'm like, damn, I got to run an hour sales training today, then I got to bang the phones, you know, and th what's been what's been putting me in the right mindset is like, we're at war, and we're in the trenches, and we're going to do yeah. this shit together, and we're going to scream, and we're going we're gonna to smash the desk, we're going to yeah. blast some music, but we're going to make some money today. Yeah. Um, I really appreciate it. I think that's fantastic advice. I know you just said the limitations of goals. But I'm curious, what what are your what are your aspirations? What are your future goals in the real estate industry? So I have a dream to build a skyscraper. It's like my longtime dream since I was like a kid. Wow. And I'm obsessed with cranes. So like, you know, like if you're in Jersey City at any given time, there's like a million twenty yeah, cranes yeah. in the sky, right? And like one, like even in like a you know, small radius. And I would sit on like my rooftops when I was doing condos in Jersey City. And I would just, like, watch them. And I'm like, this is what I want. I want to do this. And I have no idea how to do it, so I'm, I'm probably a long time out. But that's definitely a huge goal of mine is, like, to change a skyline so that, mm, like, you know, it's going to be there that. forever, right? Like, you can have a house, and it's, like, kind of cool. Like, oh, I have that house, or I have that apartment building. But, like, when you have a skyscraper, yeah. that's, like, that's not going anywhere. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? It'll, it'll be there forever. It's legacy. Yeah, it's what legacy. What are you that building? I don't know. That's a good question. I was like legacy building. I was like, <laughs> I love it. I'll take one percent for that one. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, we'll give you the money. You take like 0. 0.5 bips. Yeah. On I actually thought about going to work for somebody that like builds skyscrapers. Like yeah. maybe that's how I learn. Maybe mm. like I take a break because like right now to get a deal done seems like impossible. Yes. Yeah, it's. Tough. I was like, maybe this is like I switch it up. I take two years. I learn from somebody, mm. but I don't, I don't think I can work for anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Not now. Either. Yeah, I don't yeah. think I can. Something about building buildings, right? Building buildings, that's, Build. the, coolest, that's the coolest thing ever. It yeah. is pretty exciting. Yeah. yeah, the steel. Yeah. Yeah, the steel watching it just, you know, it go up and, and it's it's a it's a big, you can't get any bigger than that. Yeah. Once you've built that, that's, I mean, where do you go from there? Knowing you, Amanda, I know for <laughs> sure that 
that dream is going to happen. Um, if the people want to find you, invest with you, reach out to you, uh, well, where can they find you? I guess, Everyone, I guess LinkedIn. LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah. They're going to be one of the 10,000 unread. Yeah. <laughs> it, no, I mean, yeah. So LinkedIn's good. Amanda Sokol, Instagram. Yeah. You have my Instagram. If they want to send you a deal, any, any yeah. advice? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you can send me deals. I try to underwrite them as quickly as I can. I do underwrite my own deals. So any uh, deals you send me, I do go through it myself. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I mean, send me deals. I love deals. I think that's the one email is that we all open very, very quickly. Deals. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. like change how I feel about brokers. Brokers send me deals. <laughs> Good deals. It. Not with like fake expenses. Amen. I want like real expenses. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Amanda, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. I think um, hopefully we can find somebody to invest in your deal because yeah. it sounds great. And uh, let's keep it rolling. This, this has been this has been a great time. We appreciate yeah. you coming on. Let's ride, baby. Let's ride. Yeah. <laughs>